Having been given the opportunity to design something which we believed would incorporate the future of propulsion, we didn't just want to create an extremely sustainable design, but also a solution which could help human life. So, with this, Stratis set out researching a project that would have both of these main considerations at heart. After some collaboration, the team decided on our concept, the organ droner. The drone plane design was created to transport organs for emergency transplant operations quickly and autonomously while also being kind to the environment. The nose is detachable and opens the storage area inside the body where the cooled and insulated storage box is placed and strapped in. It utilises hydrogen fuel cells to power its propulsive motors and has a cambered wing design which helps control the aircraft and increase efficiency during straight and level flight. The aircraft is quickly refuelled using hydrogen canisters which are held at the rear and can be removed and inserted easily through the removable hatch just above them. The 3D Experience platform was vital to the completion of the project. The team utilised multiple apps throughout the solution generation to collaborate by planning our tasks and next actions, sharing research documents and helpful literature, creating, assembling and testing components of our design and keeping up with the 3D experience community for helpful tips about using the platform. When a healthy organ is able to be used to save a life, transporting it either domestically or between nations becomes a major challenge. For this vital medical procedure, the timing is a key aspect, with the life of a patient depending on how safely and swiftly the organ can be transported to them. Unfortunately, between April 2018 and March 2019, 400 patients on the waiting list died without receiving an organ. There are currently just under 5,000 people waiting for a transplant in the UK, with 1,621 having received a transplant since April of this year. The organ donation law was changed to opt out in May for England and is changing from March 2021 in Scotland meaning unless the person has explicitly stated they don't wish to donate their organs prior to death, their organs will automatically be donated. This increases the number of available organs dramatically, but also requires a more efficient transportation system. Currently, most organ transportations are handled by third-party organizations, which arrange the transfer through a series of road vehicles and charter flights. This could be a long-lasting journey that could cause many logistical issues to occur. The organ droner aircraft would be an essential concept that could revolutionize this process. In essence, our aircraft aims to provide an express route for organs to be moved from hospital to hospital without the assistance of other vehicles. This aircraft can perform vertical takeoff and landing maneuvers that allow it to land close to the hospital and this means large takeoff areas are not required. The current organ transportation system is overly complicated, having to rely on multiple people to carry it out properly and in time. While the level of security needed is unquestionable, the number of steps involved is a bit too much and combined with the fact that external contractors are responsible for conducting the transport, this can lead to many possible delays. As every minute could be crucial for a successful transplant, our organ droner solution aims to eliminate as many potential delays as possible by bringing the system in-house. The hospital or a transplant center would require a dedicated wing with access to a landing area, such as a small helipad, for sending and receiving drone deliveries, with possibly only one person being in charge there, depending on the frequency of deliveries. The organ storage box would be loaded into the drone, the exact delivery location selected and the rest would be done autonomously by the drone. On the receiving end, another person would take the organ box out of the drone and let it proceed to the next delivery or change the hydro itself. The security aspect of the transport could be easily solved by using QR codes or similar technology. Although some more national operating procedure changes would be required to accommodate the system, the potential increase in efficiency is worth it. We wanted to ensure the design was as sustainable as possible while also being effective at its job. Thus, the team looked to implement a propulsion system 
that was environmentally friendly and would be able to fit within a smaller design and allow the aircraft's range to be extended for as long as possible. We looked to use materials which would be suitable for our design with our focus on weight and strength while not being overly harmful to the environment to produce. The team set out on researching sustainable propulsion methods which we could use within our design and debated about the use of multiple forms of sustainable propulsion. These included sustainable aviation fuels, hydrogen combustion, battery electric and hydrogen fuel cells. We wanted to incorporate a true zero emissions concept which allowed us to rule out sustainable aviation fuels and hydrogen combustion as some greenhouse gases are still emitted with their use even though carbon is reduced either mostly or completely. This left us with a choice between battery electric and hydrogen fuel cells which could both be a viable option. However, after some research it was found that at certain temperatures and pressure conditions, hydrogen can possess a much higher volumetric and gravimetric energy density than batteries can. This means that hydrogen could store more energy in a smaller volume and weight value than batteries could. It is important to note, however, that currently battery electric propulsion would be a more likely choice for this design concept due to it being more cost effective and simpler to implement. Hydrogen currently costs more than similar capacity batteries and must be stored at certain temperatures and pressures to give its optimum energy density, possibly meaning new storage solution would be required. Despite this, future research and development into hydrogen fuel cells utilisation could allow the fuel to become cheaper and may also allow us to unlock its full energy potential, making it a vast improvement on current battery solutions. Hydrogen fuel cells are able to generate electricity through electrochemical reactions which combine hydrogen from a fuel source with oxygen from the air. This process happens without the need for combustion and only emits heat and water in the form of vapour as its byproducts. Our design takes a simpler plastic approach to implementing this, using hydrogen filled cylinders for a fuel storage connected to two 400 watt output power cell modules which produce the electric power. These are both connected to a power path module which allows the linking of two fuel cells in series and creates a summative output power for the electric motors to utilise. The fact that carbon fibre has become a widely used material in sports cars, bike frames and even aircraft influenced our choice in using it. Its lightness combined with the sturdiness to withstand high forces makes it one of the best materials in aircraft that embody the future of propulsion. The other aspect to it is its sustainability. When the fuselage structure of the aircraft is made 20% lighter using carbon fiber, 1,400 tons of carbon dioxide is reduced. It is also a highly recyclable material, as variations of a pyrolysis process can be done to firmly decompose the resin, leaving behind clean carbon fibers which can be reused. Carbon fiber is made from very thin filaments of carbon atoms, which are drawn into long strands and then heated to high temperatures with no oxygen. Fibers are subsequently woven into a fabric. The carbon fiber parts are made in the mold manufactured from aluminium. The carbon fiber is then pre impregnated with two component high temperature epoxy so that the carbon fiber doesn't stick to the mold. The material is cut to the correct size and then put in place by hand. An easy to peel off perforated release film is put over the top to prevent anything sticking to the carbon fiber. The next part to be placed over it is the weaver a lightweight polyester blanket that ensures there are no pockets of air and that the pressure and vacuum gets evenly spread out over the entire port. Any pressure differences can be controlled thanks to this brief. A vacuum bag is then used to seal it all in place and is also helpful in securing the first layer in place for another layer to go over if it is necessary. Heat and pressure are finally applied to give it the exact strength and density required of the piece. The design process was carried out by multiple team members and through the ability to collaborate using SOLIDWORKS and the 3D Experience platform. All of the aircraft's components were designed and altered using X-Design and X-Shape and assembled together to make the complete prototype model. During the first iteration of the design process, the team considered the following requirements for the aircraft. Having an area for small cargo and being able to access this area. Being light and sturdy having a storage area for fuel cells and being easy to refuel, capable of producing enough thrust to lift the cargo and transport it, 
being fast enough to reduce the current the current organ for transportation times and being able to take off and land vertically from hospitals. With these in mind, the initial concept of the organ donor design the organ donor design was thought of as being a small drone with a cargo load was discovered to be a heavier than expected. With this new information, we realised the drone would have to be scaled up to produce enough thrust uh, to transport the cargo. We also realised that with the wing design may help with the concept to be more efficient and capable at higher speeds. This then led to the idea of a hybrid plane and drone with the inspiration coming from a V-22 Osprey aircraft. This allowed both vertical and horizontal flight, however the design was now larger. We realised it was the best to land on the rooftops of helipads like the ones that are seen in most major hospitals. The design could now also make use of the wings allowing it to fly faster and allow it to be more sufficient in lift and flight. Once the final concept had materialised, the design was created and successfully integrated our design parameters through its detachable nose, accessible cargo area, multi-directional electric motors, a cambered wing to produce a decent lift coefficient and straight and level flight, the utilisation of a carbon fibre shell, a central power system storage with rear hydrogen fuel cylinder hold area, and also a removable rear hatch. The design's ability to take off and land vertically from rooftops and helipads would make it a viable option for us to use in most hospitals without extensive infrastructure construction, and both cargo and fuel are easily accessible and replaced. We performed some structural analysis, simulations and components of our design using the Physics Results Explorer and Simulia. We carried out this testing on parts of our design which would be under the most intensive stresses and would therefore be most likely to fail. This helped us to understand sections of the design which could be improved through relating the maximum stress values to the chosen materials yield stress. As the 3D Experience platform is collaborative, it allowed all team members to view the results individually. This design could be developed by shedding unnecessary weight from the fuselage. Optimising the wing to produce greater lift, this could be implemented by adding in leading edge slots or extending flaps at the trailing edge. These accessories allow the flow to re-energise the laminar flow over the wing, which in turn will increase the aerodynamic lift capabilities. We could also measure aerodynamic performance by producing real results from calculations before adjusting the design to be optimised, making it a more viable product. The model could also look to utilise a cooling system to manage both the hydrogen storage temperature to optimise volumetric energy and the fuel cell heat emissions that could impact the internal temperature of the body. Due to this technology being relatively new in the aviation industry, there are still immense amounts of research that, um, and development being conducted on it. Therefore, to account for the gap in knowledge, key engineering assumptions were implemented in order to obtain a vague idea of the performance factors of this aircraft. Some of the key dimensions of the drone are that its wingspan is 2 meters and it is 1.8 meters in length. We estimated the total mass of the drone to be around 25 kilograms. This mass includes the mass of the um, organ storage compartments and also the fuel cell battery equipment. From our initial research, we discovered that typically unmanned delivery drones from the likes of Amazon and UPS, etc., tend to travel at speeds of around 150 miles per hour for a range of 75 miles and tends to travel at altitudes of around 250 meters. Since there isn't much readily available data, we assume that our drone would be operating at conditions similar to this. From research papers, some data regarding the coefficient of lift and drag for small, low-speed remote control aircrafts were found. These values were adapted and used for the analysis. The weight component and the lift and drag coefficients were readjusted with a safety factor of 1.4 um, and afterwards all the above figures were used to estimate the required thrust to operate the drones. The calculation showed that around um, 783 watts of output power would be required to keep the drone in the air. Therefore, we, con we concluded that our, for our current operating conditions, a fuel cell module at around 800 watts would be sufficient to power the aircraft. Cells of such power are, are actually currently available through some specialised vendors. Furthermore, ideally it would be much more effective to contain the hydrogen in liquid form at its optimal conditions for the best performance output. This is one of the major hurdles because the hydrogen would not would have to be cooled at temperatures below negative 250 degrees Celsius. From research, we obtained that equations to determine how much hydrogen the fuel cells would consume. 
We know that one kilogram of hydrogen equates to around 14.128 liters in its liquid form. Therefore, if we had to, if we were to incorporate one liter storage on board, then it could possibly power the aircraft to run for up to 50 plus hours. This is assuming optimum conditions for hydrogen storage, although um, this would be impossible using the technology available today. With further developments uh, in the use of hydrogen fuel cells, we would be able to unlock its full potential, which may see it become a um, sustainable option for the future propulsion.